Today we are testing my monthly body composition and showing you how you can change yours from tips from the doctor. <laughs> I do my hair toss, check my nails, baby how you feeling? Really good as hell. Hair toss, check my nails, baby how you feeling? Really good I am just about to get to my appointment with Dr. Mauricio because we are doing our monthly body composition testing and I'm going to talk with the doctor afterwards to explain how what we focus on when we talk about body composition, what is most important especially for a physique athlete like me and how to change your body composition. have all the measurements that we talked before. Mm -hmm. This is the perimeters, so we can see here that the change, for example here in the tight, a bit bigger too, but with a lot of wow. less fat. So just so I can explain, so this area, the perimeter is more of the the total size, mm -hmm. and then this these measurements would be for the fat. Yes, so yes. this is the adipose tissue or fat and this is the size of the skin folds in the different part of the body. Okay, so it's this total size minus this and it's almost like that is the, the amount of muscle. Yes, more of, or less. for example here is a, of course that you have more muscle in your middle part of your thigh because the perimeter, the total is more and you have less fat so wow. of course it's so much muscle so here. Much in the rest, your weight is pretty the same. It's not a big difference, 0 0.1 kilograms. It's funny hundred. because, so now every week, I check in with my coach two times, okay. like two times in the week. My weight's not changing, but when I, I take my photos, like big difference. Yes. But I'm like, this is good. But because when I go on stage, my weight doesn't matter. Yes. They don't care how much I weigh, they have how I look, of course. In the super spinal that is very very low in you I have never seen that in other girls 2.8 in super spinal. super spinal is here ah, yeah. uh, up the spine of Lovely. the pelvis um, and that's the part where the men gain fat usually the part of the body where the girls gain fat are uh, in the extremities in the arm is that is the tricep the thigh that is the only part where you have a bit of fat <laughs> and the calf your waist is a bit smaller okay, um, your hip is the same with less fat so that means that you gain a bit of muscle in that part because yeah. the bones are mix of fat and muscle, muscle yeah. and that's the problem that the girl have when they lose fat that they lose the bone they lose their bone yeah yes to the change in adipose tissue, poquito menos. it's poquito menos, but that is half, uh, yeah, half pound, big different than the your yeah. your weight, and we can see two a difference in your muscle mass, around a pound more, 500 grams. We can check here that number. What means that number? That number is the muscle bone index. I is the that. weight of your muscle under the weight of your bone or the weight of your skeleton that doesn't okay, change and you are pretty close uh. than four <laughs> here uh, 4.2 is usually the limit of muscle that the woman can get in natural way okay. of course understand better we can see shoes the weight of muscle that you had. You had 25.5 for 
of muscle and you have now 28.7, 25.5 is more than three kilograms of muscle in natural way yeah, in a that, woman. Yeah, that, takes, yeah, that yeah. takes over two years. Yeah, but when you up more your, your muscle that I think, is in the last year. Oh yeah. Because before you was you have other goal, your goal was strength Just and you strength, was competing yeah. in now it's volume hypertrophy. Volume and hypertrophy, exactly. Okay, no. So to summarize all of that, even though I'm in a very slight caloric deficit, but definitely enough of one where I can feel it, I have actually gained a little bit of muscle, which is great. My glutes have stayed the same size, which is like the biggest thing. Oh we didn't measure my shoulders. Yes. We have to measure my shoulders. We're going to do that right now. And basically just really good body recomposition. So my measurements in a good way are down where they need to be more so in my waist and my weight hasn't changed, which I think is like probably the most, the best thing ever. So really, really good news. And I'm very, very happy. Okay, we are here with Dr. Mauricio from Fitness Playa. You have Yo. seen him before on my anthropometry YouTube video that we first did like two and a half years ago. Yes. Almost, is, almost three years ago. anthropometry oh today. Oh my gosh, it's been so many. So I will link that video at the end so you can get more details about that. But I do want to ask him some questions about body composition. First one is when people do body composition tests, they always look at body fat percentage. What do you think is most important when we are looking at the number and why? Yeah, we use the body composition test, of course, to see the change. Uh, the numbers in the five component uh, anthropometry test that we are using is to see the change in adipose tissue that is pretty different than fat right. and the muscle mass. And we have to the bone mass to compare the muscle with the bone. So okay. if we can understand uh, the ratio of bone ma of muscle bones, okay. muscle bone ratio. Why do we measure adipose tissue? Like, what is what is the adipose mass, and why is it not body fat? Okay, and uh, I try to make it simple. Uh, when we're measuring uh, the adipose tissue, we are measuring the tissue. So, okay, the total adipocyte with the uh, water that is between them the water that is inside them and the protein that is the uh, collagen normal between that adipocyte. We are measuring, and of course, the fat that is inside the adipocyte. And when you are measuring uh, fat, we are measuring that fat that is inside the adipocyte. That came for a different formulation and equation. That is an anatomical test, we see. And the other is a chemical test. Okay. I don't know if you guys can explain yeah, yeah. that, but... So, so adipose tissue, it's not just the pure fat. There's actually, so like, just say, let's just say this is your fat cell. There's water inside of it, and what else is inside of it? And we always have water uh, inside the adipocyte and outside, the intracellular water and the extracellular water. So when we measure the adipose mass, we don't technically measure for this test, we don't measure pure body fat, we measure the adipose tissue, which is also water included in the fat mass. Because my opinion, I don't think measuring actual body fat percentage is very accurate, because it's a percentage of someone's total body weight, so it can change a lot. Yeah, but the thing is when you are measuring fat, there are a different way to find that number. Yes. For example, you use uh, uh, build balance like the that uh, like a DEXA scan or in body yeah or for example the in body uh, that formulation are made to measure the body fat right and uh, they are formulation where to use with anthropometry to measure the body fat this is a two component test right but there are a lot of different equation and formulation that depend uh, of the population that we are working. So we can, we using the same number that you, I show you in the mm -hmm. first uh, anthropometry, we can reach different result of body fat. So when we see in someone that put, ah, my body fat in internet, in the internet, in the social media, <laughs> uh, of course, we need to ask with, uh, what, with what system use it to measure that body fat. Exactly, very inaccurate. So recently I did an Instagram post talking about somatotypes. So I'm sure you're familiar with ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. We are 
somehow led to believe that when you were born with that type of body, that is what you have. And there's the whole like, you can eat for your body type. And yeah. I actually had a client recently ask me about this. And over the last almost three years of doing this test, my body has actually changed from being an ectomorph to like borderline hitting that mesomorph. So I wanna ask the doctor how, how it's possible to change that and why we are not fixed on only, only one body type for our entire lives. For example, we have here the somatotype uh, chart, the graphic. Up, we have the mesomorph, at the right and low, the ectomorph, and in the left, the endomorph. That is a system that what we use it for uh, identify the characteristics of the person and the tendon that they have, but it could change in the life, the lifestyle, the exercise, and the body composition of the person. It's not just that you born with one somatotype and that is fixed for all your life. When some people say uh, that you need to eat in different way depending on your somatotype, it's pretty the same that they <laughs> see that you can eat in each way depending on your blood type. That's not true. We can see the Courtney, she, yeah. when we start with the test, she was here, pretty close than the ectomorph. Of course, she had that tendency for all her life, but now she training is going up in that direction to the mesomorph. We can see how she changed uh, your somatotype. And this mostly changed, I would say more so over the last six months. Yeah. when i started putting when i finally started being okay with gaining weight eating in a real caloric surplus where i've talked about before how i would like borderline like oh i'm, I'm eating more i'm gonna get big but i would never like hit break that barrier of and it was it was the scale that was always messing with me so when i finally learned like six or eight months ago to finally be okay with actually gaining more weight eating more, being able to train better, train for hypertrophy, so a lot more volume, that's when most of this changed. So this isn't just genetics. Yes, their genetics do play a role, but this is more so lifestyle factors. And that's why I talk about all the time, like, yes, genetics are important. Yes, they do make a difference, but it's all about your lifestyle and it's your habits and the things that you yes. do day in, day out. And a lot of that is your training and your nutrition. Yes, yeah, of course, some people are ectomorph, and if they doesn't eat well and they eat a lot and they move to the endomorph. I saw a lot of people who was ectomorph when they was young and after they are endomorph. And <laughs> to move to that way part is very difficult. So the third question I want to ask the doctor is how do we understand our muscle building potential and how can we change that? How can we actually tap into building more muscle? So some of us think like, oh, I can't build more muscle. It's too hard. It doesn't fit on my frame. And when, since we've been doing all of these tests, doctor has told me that I, I can build more muscle, but I always thought like, I'm really training hard. I'm really eating well. Like I, I just can't build muscle. Some women say that either they, they build muscle way too quickly or they don't build muscle at all. And we actually can see how much bone mass I have where my muscle mass is right now and then what my potential is so how much how much more muscle can i put on my body that my bone structure can support uh, in the five component uh, system for anthropometry we measure the bone that uh, we do uh, the first time and this that part in the chart is the diacromial the thorax turnbird the Spanish. pelvis <laughs> diameter and that, all that measurement we use to calculate the weight of the bones that we did the first time, the first anthropometry two and a half years before. And we obtained the number that is 7.4. That is the weight of the coordinate skeleton. And it don't change. But we compare the muscle, the weight of muscle, what could change, of course it's changing, <laughs> uh, with the bone mass and we obtain a very important number in that test that is the muscle bone index. The girls can reach 4.2 normally in natural way that the limit, the limitation right. to get uh, the maximum of, all, of muscle is comes with the bone weight. So okay so, so she still have uh, she still up the muscles to, to, to 4.2.
So I still have potential and in the last month, I'm starting to push in a bit of a caloric deficit and I'm still building my muscle bone index, just like my muscle building potential. I'm still tapping into that. We originally took my bone measurements, my skeletal size, the first time we did this test like two and a half years ago. And now every month we kind of take this, the calculation of our, my muscle mass and then my bone mass. And those two numbers is basically a formula and that's how we come up with my muscle bone index. So I am at 3.986, like almost at the 4.0, and I still have potential to build up to 4.2 very naturally. So if I wanted to start supplementing or taking some enhancements, I could build that even more for the federation and the competition style that I'm in bikini. I don't necessarily need to do that, but it does prove that I still have potential to tap into building a little bit more muscle naturally. Yeah, you can reach one and a half kilogram of muscle to reach that 4.2. So I can gain another kilo and a half of muscle, Natural not even weight. just total body weight, of muscle naturally. Yeah, and when we, when you started, Was where you was? Uh, I've gained a lot when you look back at those photos. Yeah. I'll do a comparison afterwards, but showing you like the first test that we did here and then now there is definitely definitely big changes. So that is everything. Thank you so much yeah, for your time. You did great you. speaking yeah. in English. <laughs> that was right. really great. So we're going to keep doing these tests. I will be doing them every month and that's it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and we will answer them. Bye friends. Bye.